When a church in southwest Georgia began working on a follow-up movie to the surprise hit Facing the Giants, people said they didn't have a prayer. Those people obviously don't know the heart of Sherwood Pictures or the God they serve. After Facing the Giants, we went through a season of prayer asking the Lord, what's the next direction you'd have us to go for this movie ministry? And uh, I was running around the block one day and um, uh, the Lord impressed on me to focus on marriage which is not what I was inclined to do. And after a season of prayer, he gave me this concept for the love dare, shared it with my brother Stephen, who instantly said, that's it. I am just journaling my sort of thoughts and emotions. I've got like four pages on the first day. I'm gonna need another journal. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron Buffet, and I play Katherine Holt in Fireproof. I'm one of more than 1,000 volunteers from Sherwood and the community of Albany that came together to film this movie about a firefighter, his wife, and a marriage worth rescuing. This term, irreconcilable differences, I mean, there are days in every marriage when you've got irreconcilable differences, but you don't quit. You stay with it. And uh, I think it is important as Christians that we say, what we do in marriage impacts the next generation and how they view commitment, how they view love, how they have hope. When Fireproof opened in theaters in 2008, it began providing hope to marriages, both struggling and healthy ones across the country. While we knew it would make an impact on people, we had no way of knowing that this movie would become a movement. Join with me as we take a look back at the two-month window in the fall of 2007 when an all-volunteer team from Albany, Georgia filmed 30 days worth of scenes that became fireproof. You know, we use the, the, the story of the five loaves and two fish. The young man didn't save some loaves and fish for himself. He gave it all to the Lord. The Lord multiplied it, and that young man got to eat too with everybody else. And so we're trying to give our gifts to the Lord. And so we are watching him pull volunteers out of our church that have certain gifts that are needed on this movie project. Um, and he, he takes what he's given us, and, um, and he brings people, you know, professionals to help train us. And so these movies are happening, and they're getting better and better production-wise, acting-wise, and every other way. As we, as we grow up in this movie ministry um, because we're dedicating all these things to him. On the weekend before filming began, we held a boot camp for volunteers to learn the responsibilities involved with their assignments. So let me tell you a little bit about how it's going to function every day. Then at our Sunday evening service, the leaders of the church prayed for our entire team and the movie at a special commissioning service. Father, we pray good for the actors, the crew, the volunteers, the servants, We want to start off this morning saying, Lord, this movie is, is of you. We're asking you to carry us through it. And Lord, we're already preparing. We're, we've already got a rendezvous with you, Lord, privately and then corporately. But we're going to lay this movie at your feet. It's October 15th, our first day on the set. We began our first day of shooting the same way we began each and every day, with a devotional and a time of prayer. When a group of church volunteers gets together to make a movie, it's important to ask God to lead the way. This is the first day of Fireproof. We were very excited about shooting. And uh, across the street, we're shooting Catherine Holt uh, in one of the pivotal scenes in the movie. And behind me, Kirk Cameron's getting a little trim. And so we're very jazzed about uh, how everything's coming together. The first week of shooting was one of the most difficult for a lot of reasons. Many of the most demanding scenes were the ones shot that week. Alex, um, he really wanted to make it easy on us and, and start off. You know, just getting our feet wet. I've never done a real film before, and so he really made it easy on me by making me ball my eyes out all day yesterday. We fought, we made up, we killed parasites. That first week covered a lot of ground. All of this was shot inside of a house that was built by Bill Butler, who might be familiar to fans of Facing the Giants. We need new leadership. We had uh, agreed to let him use it, and within days, we had, you know, right before we started shooting, we had uh, a couple come through and just fell in love with it. Sheila McBride had decorated the home for the set, so it looked real lived in. It was real, instead of a cold, empty model home, it really spiced it up. We weren't stuck indoors all week, however. Kirk had to do a lot of running in his role as Caleb, including jogging up to the mailbox to find a gift from his dad, the love dare. 
And our movie heroes, the firefighters, learned all about their roles firsthand this week as they trained with real heroes, the Albany Fire Department. And all the actors, man, they, they catch on so quick. You know, we give them some instructions and everything, and they're you know, real eager to learn. So they'll come up to me and, and say, you know, all right, what'd you do right here? And you, know, you give them one little thing, and they're in, you know, really involved in what they're doing. So everybody has been great in doing their own, you know, performing in their own little part. Well, you know, <laughs> five days of experience. I mean, like me and Julia Roberts could compete, you know. <laughs> no, I, it's still all very new to me, but at least I'm not quite as nervous as I was last week, so. Hi, I'm Sean Morgan uh, on the set here, Fireproof. This is uh, day six of shooting, and uh, it's our first day at uh, Phoebe Hospital. While no one was ill, we spent the entire second week of shooting at the hospital. His ears just couldn't take it anymore. Goodbye, Kevin. You're not supposed to laugh. <laughs> this was no general hospital. This is Phoebe Putney Memorial Hospital in Albany, Georgia. The hospital graciously donated the floor we used for all the hospital scenes, a section of their cafeteria for the lunchroom scenes, and an outdoor eating area that we transformed into the restaurant where Catherine and her friends ate dinner. I'd like to just cut Alex out of the equation altogether, because I think, you know, I mean, we gotta cut we gotta cut somewhere and why not start at the top, you know? Low budget finder. So Alex, after running camera, how does it feel to be a new director of photography? Well, we're finally getting some shots. You I mean. think we even <laughs> <laughs> I think both Sherwood Baptist Church and Phoebe Putney have similar visions for their community. My wife and I have uh, had seen previous uh, productions. We're very impressed with the uh, uh, Facing the Giants movie. And we said, you know, if it's going to be here in Albany, Georgia, um, we just would love to be part of that project. Hi, I'm Claire, and I'm an extra as a nurse, and we're about to go shoot our scene. And I'm, I'm Amber Marker, and I play Ashley Phillips, and I'm going to be an extra today, and they're going to shoot the back of my head. And background. The hospital scenes also provided a lot of opportunities for cameo appearances for church members and even VIPs who were visiting our set. This is Julie Fairchild. Julie is on the uh, marketing promotions team for all of our movies. And I'm sticking her in this shot. She didn't know it, but she's going to do awesome. When you take a movie on the road, there are all kinds of technical issues to deal with. And that's on top of the increased technical aspects Fireproof had in comparison with our first two movies, Flywheel and Facing the Giants. Okay, I'm here with the uh, video capture team. Uh, we've got Bill Abel here and uh, Brad Weston. Brad's down here. And uh, these guys oversee the capture of all the uh, footage. Brad, explain to us what kind of setup we've got when it comes out of the barricade and what happens. Well, we actually take uh, audio from the various, the mix down of audio right into the camera itself and we're recording that to tape on the camera. Yeah, um, as, as a backup. Get, as a backup. Yeah. Uh, and then we actually take a single HDSDI cable out of the camera run it all the way into this room uh, into the computer and we're actually recording we got a mac down there it's a mac pro running final cut uh, studio uh, we were recording with uh, apple's new prores uh, 422 codec which gives us uncompressed quality at dramatically smaller file sizes so we're actually recording every clip to two drives simultaneously so we're, we automatically have a backup yes um, so when we're finished with and we fill up those drives we can take one of those off-site and store it and protect and the other yeah. With Flywheel, we lost so much edited footage, and now we're in a situation where we've got backup tape and we've got backup on the hard drive to kind of protect the footage. Technically, we were off on our third week. With many of the same volunteers working on Fireproof committed to the fall festival, it seemed like an ideal time to take a break. The actual third week of shooting brought us back to the Holtz house, and this time we had quite a few guests. The Provident Films marketing team invited a number of media outlets and marriage ministries to the set to get a close-up, behind-the-scenes look at Fireproof. Media members from radio networks and stations, online news sites and television networks were busy interviewing people. I think I spent as much time on camera with our guests as I did on camera for Fireproof that week. The interviews were great, and the relationships we built had some long-lasting impact. For example, Kirk was interviewed by J.J. Jasper of American Family Radio. How did you become involved with this new movie, Fireproof? Well, uh, the way that it all got started was uh, I, I providentially bumped into 
Alex Kendrick and Pastor Michael Katz from Sherwood in the food court in the Atlanta airport. No, you did not. Yes, I did. Get out of here. We also had firefighters from Los Angeles and New York City on the set. They were there representing Firefighters for Christ International. Their stories of real life heroics enthralled and humbled us. Good old Southern hospitality was a natural part of the set visits for everyone. Our guests were able to watch the earliest clips from Fireproof, learn how Mark Willard creates the music for our films, tour the church, visit our new sports park, eat the great meals provided by Sunday school classes, and get a feel for Sherwood's worldwide ministry that happens from Albany, Georgia. As we readied for our fourth week of shooting in five weeks, a tragic car accident took the life of Robert Chip Monk, one of a handful of professional crew members from Orlando that worked on Fireproof. We canceled shooting that week to minister to his family. Thanksgiving week was a welcomed break, so we ended up back on the set in late November to begin three consecutive weeks of shooting. And what a week it was. A wedding rained out, a wedding held, a house burning, a child being rescued, all over the course of five days. Throw in a couple of long walks for Caleb and his dad and some funny firehouse scenes, and you have the fourth week in a nutshell. It's week four of filming Fireproof, and we are actually about to shoot the very last scene of the movie, which is the vow renewal between Caleb and Catherine. They've come to this beautiful setting where Caleb got saved and Catherine got saved. It's just behind their house uh, to renew their wedding vows. The wedding scene turned out to be a beautiful ending to the movie. The camera sweeping down on top of the wedding cake is one of my favorite images. But can I let you in on a little secret? It was freezing the day we shot that. It was the only day of shooting that most of the cast was together. The nurses and firefighters had a great time together in between takes. For the shots of the wedding guest faces, assistant director David Nixon had Kirk tell stories to keep everyone engaged. Is this supposed to be a comedy or what? And uh, they thought, wow, this guy's, uh, you know, he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Uh, obviously, this is a sitcom. For two long, full days, we were a full-fledged action movie. Hard time, baby. <laughs> I can't wait till the fire starts so we can warm up. <laughs> we're back on the set of Fireproof, burning down the house, and as you can see, we've already started a little bit of the fire. Um, so this is really exciting. They're rehearsing right over here, the first little part when the firemen first get to the house and find out that the little girl is still inside. So, I mean, this is going to be incredible, guys. Look at this. Oh, the house is on fire. Run! Run! Lots of preparation and planning went into the house fire scene where Caleb rescues little Lacey. No. Training with the so Albany Fire Department, Holy the professional rest. fire technicians <laughs> setting up the house burn, and of course, prayer for everyone's safety. Needless to say, it was an intense two days. And we're, we're doing this! This is just stuff we thought of. Despite the stressful situation, there were some lighter moments. Like when one of the local television stations showed up at the house thinking there was a real fire. All in all, it was two days the entire team will long remember. Best of all, it looked great in the film. One supply line is one. As if there weren't enough smoke and flames, we had one more day where we filmed the crawl space rescue. Of all the sets used throughout Fireproof, the crawl space was the only one that was built for the film. It was a simple structure that was built to simulate the crawl space while allowing for the room needed to act out and film the scene. A lot of people don't know the subtle um, things we stick in the movie. For example, from Flywheel, Jay Austin's phone number is 555-4400. That's what you see on the sign. Uh, the front of his truck will say Jay Austin Motors, just like we do in uh, Facing the Giants. Uh, Jay Austin sells a lot of red trucks. And right here, if you look at the front of this monitor, it says, Call Jay, 555-4400.
because uh, that's where he got his truck. He needs something fixed on the truck. I think mean, that'll be in the novel. So anyway, uh, that's, that's how it happens here. All, see, all of these movies exist in the same world. All of them. One of the most challenging jobs on any movie set is that of the director. Just watch as Alex dissects this very pivotal scene. Bam! And you knock it over like this and just come beat on it. And probably this side, so if we have to shoot it more than once, you know, because I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to crack it. You know, see here. Bam! 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 This is a Sherwood slugger <laughs> for the most impact on the trash can and the computer screen for that matter. So only the best for this movie. Clear the background, please. Come on through. Come on through. Thank you. Now, when I would see Fireproof with an audience, there was always a great response to the scenes with Caleb and Mr. Rudolph. Bill Stafford brought Mr. Rudolph to life at the week's end, shooting all of his scenes in one day. Okay, look, up, look over at her and say, Irma, I don't want you talking to that guy. He is weird. Takes one to know one. Big day, big, big, big day. We, we have a plan, we got some storyboards. We have prayed over today, we're gonna continue to praying over today, and we're gonna ask God to help us be efficient, effective, to get great shots, uh, and, and this is new for most of us, working with uh, a train and a car wreck shots like this, but uh, we're confident that God's gonna give us what we need. Our final week of shooting began in Shellman, Georgia, a town 35 miles northwest of Albany. That's where the train scene was filmed in just two days. How we ended up there is another story of God's provision. Amazingly, every set location we used in the filming of Fireproof was donated. Wayne Holt came to see me and he came with an individual with the railroad. And I've known Terry Eggers for some time with the railroad and they tell me what they had in mind and I tell them we would be more than happy to accommodate them. And Lord, uh, we acknowledge you and we After depend on you. After our morning prayer in the train and, uh, depot, we, we got you. strapped in and started working. Later in the week, okay? when we were back at the firehouse, the team gathered together yep. to watch the first edited version of our hard work. Put my weapon if I post that to come to death and live. Fittingly, for a movie about a firefighter, our shooting wrapped up at Fire Station 1 in the heart of Albany. And for a love story, it was fitting that the last scene on the last day was Caleb and Catherine's reunion in the Bay. As you may know by now, they used Kirk's wife, Chelsea. Both Sherwood Pictures and Kirk are committed to not doing any kissing scenes between married actors who aren't married to each other. So, Chelsea and their kids flew to Albany for the final day. It was a wonderful way to finish off an amazing six okay. weeks of filming. Beautiful. God has caused people who would never have come together to share the gospel, to come together and cooperate from every walk of life, uh, from the hospital to the city, the police department to the fire department, uh, surrounding communities. We've all come together for the purpose of bringing the gospel to the world in a different way. On December 14th, we wrapped up six weeks of shooting over a two-month period by having our wrap party at Fire Station 1 in Albany, Georgia. We had no idea how Fireproof would do at the box office, but we did know that we had honored God with our talents and our time. The highlight of the party? The guys that played the firefighters and leaders from the Albany Fire Department joined with Stephen for a rousing Christmas song. I want to be a Christmas tree and have twinkle lights all over me. A golden star on top of my head, stay up all night and never go to bed. I want to be a Christmas tree and I'll eat candy canes, they hang on me. When I get thirsty, it'll be so neat to see me drink water from my feet. That's why I want to be a Christmas tree. That's why I want to be a Christmas tree. That's why I want to be a Christmas tree. I hope you've enjoyed
enjoyed your look at filming a movie in 30 days. The stories we hear of marriages being restored and lives being changed inspires us to keep seeking what God has in store for us next. And our prayer is that your church is actively seeking out its own unique ways to reach the world with God's love. After all, that's the greatest story ever told. And as we say at the end of all of our films, to God be the glory.